First this hour, we go straight to our political editor, Andrew Clonell, with some breaking news, Andrew. And a blame game has erupted within the Nationals over the seat of Eden Monero, and it's not pretty. John Barillaro, the Deputy Premier of New South Wales, has sent an explosive text message last night to the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, Kieran, in which he blames him for Mr Barillaro deciding not to run for the seat, saying he never showed enthusiasm for him to run. Let's have a look at it. He says, Michael, please do not contact me. Your lack of public enthusiasm or support for my candidacy went a long way to my final decision. Don't hide behind the members will choose the candidate rubbish as you were the only one saying such lines. Don't you think my branches would have backed me in? To feel threatened by me clearly shows you have failed your team and failed as a leader. You will never be acknowledged by me as our leader. You aren't. You never will be. The Nats had a chance to create history, to change momentum, and you had a candidate that was prepared to risk everything to make it happen. What did you risk? Nothing. Hope you are proud of yourself. As we heard earlier, Andrew Constance instead becomes the favourite to win the seat running for the Liberals. One of the key points of contention for John Barillaro was that McCormack telephoned Sophie Wade, the former candidate for the seat who gained just 7% of the vote at last year's election, about her interest in running for the seat before he telephoned Barillaro last Tuesday, even though reports on Sky News and elsewhere said Barillaro was clearly interested. Then when Mr McCormack telephoned Barillaro, he did not press him to run, Kieran. And Andrew, it's not just Michael McCormack in John Barillaro's sights, is it? He also believes that Andrew Constance reneged on a deal with him. It was the lack of Mr McCormack's support and Constance reneging on standing aside for Barillaro that governed his decision not to run for the seat according to Barillaro's version of events. For the Deputy PM's part, he makes the point that Barillaro was out front running in the media before even telephoning him to ask for his support. It all began on Sunday, when on Sunday Agenda last week, Kieran, we revealed that Mike Kelly was about to make a possible retirement announcement and reported Barillaro was considering running. The Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, telephoned the Deputy Prime Minister that day, I understand, in a conversation where Mr Morrison made it clear that the Liberals would be running in the seat. Mr McCormack said the Nationals would run and it would be a three-cornered contest. Thursday, Mike Kelly announces his retirement and Andrew Constance that day gives assurances to Barillaro that if Barillaro announced, he would withdraw. In subsequent days, Constance did not repeat that assurance to Barillaro. Messages were passed through intermediaries from the PM to Mr Constance saying he would have no problem with him running. Mr Constance then began lobbying Liberals on his behalf. Mr Barillaro indicated again to reporters he would run, but Mr McCormack was less effusive in media interviews about Barillaro running. Yesterday, Barillaro pulled out and Andrew Constance told Premier Gladys Berejiklian and he was going for it. I spoke at length to the Deputy PM this morning where he insisted he had always been supportive of Mr Barillaro's bid and ultimately said it was up to Barillaro whether or not he would run. Mr McCormack said to me, I've never done anything but provide support for John Barillaro. He's been great for regional New South Wales. I gave him fulsome support. I still did say the local branches would have to endorse him. I've never given away the autonomy of local branches. If anyone thinks anything else, they're wrong. Mr McCormack, I asked him about the Barillaro text. He said he did not discuss private messages or believe they should be released, Kieran. Quite a stoush here. It is a, a massive row. We're standing by. You can see those pictures in the corner of your screen, the Prime Minister, to address the media shortly. But as we await for the Prime Minister to, uh, to get to the podium there, let's talk more about what we've said, Andrew, in relation to this text. Let's bring the text message back up, if we can, for our viewers. This was sent by the Deputy Premier of New South <laughs> Wales to the Deputy Prime Minister of the Nation, the Leader of the Nationals at the state level, to the leader of the nationals at the federal level, and he says, you are not, uh, you are not our leader. He says, you'll never be acknowledged by me as our leader. You aren't, you never will be. Extraordinary. And please do not contact me so they can't talk anymore. It, it really is a, a real stab to the heart from Michael McCormack from John Barillaro here. And it, it, it really won't do anything for his leadership. We know he was already challenged earlier this year by Barnaby Joyce. 
And McCormack's version of events, of course, is, well, Barilaro could have jumped on the blower to me. He could have pushed his candidacy to me and, and seen if I'd back him. Maybe he has a point there. But nevertheless, there's a real fearing, uh, uh, feeling from Barilaro apparent here that uh, of anger that uh, the, the, the de Deputy Prime Minister, the leader of the party, wasn't going to back him in, even though he was a high-profile figure who could have won the seat for the Nationals. Instead, the Liberals get the seat. And perhaps that will be a point of contention in the Nationals party room this week. Yeah, well, I've spoken to Andrew Constance and he said um, that the Prime Minister and he did not have a personal discussions uh, discussion. But as you said earlier, Andrew, intermediaries from the, uh, the PM's circle to Constance made it clear he would like him to run. And that's when the tone of the thing changed, as I understand it. Constance... He's given the guarantee to Barilaro on the Thursday. Barilaro thinks he's sweet. He's got his polling going. And then he tries to get onto Constance in the next couple of days and he doesn't get the same unequivocal message. By Friday, Saturday, there are federal MPs like Jason Falinski effectively in a campaign for Constance. I guess all, all's fair in love and war and these sorts of things. But from Barilaro's point of view, Constance had given him a guarantee and he had no sort of backing from the federal leader, despite the fact many would think as a Deputy Premier of New South Wales, he could be an asset for the Nationals in Canberra. But more to the point, they could have had another seat in the Parliament. Even the polling shows that. And Andrew Clennell will talk to you soon. We've got the Prime Minister's news conference shortly. But a short time ago, I spoke to Andrew Constance from...